Sarah Thomas, we're glad to have you here to worship God together this morning. I hope maybe we'll get to see a little bit of that background stuff uh, this week. We'll see. Yeah. Good. Good to have you in the house. Let's uh, take a look at a few of our announcements this week in the life of the church. The big event going on today is our Tyro, uh, the Tyro Public Ministry is going to be here uh, in Langford Hall tonight at 6 p.m. Yes. Now you might look at puppets and think, well, that's a kid's thing. No, that, that's a thing for, for all ages. They do black flag. It, it's really neat. So, um, yes, it's, it's kind of centered to, around kids, but it's, uh, all kids of all ages will enjoy it. So come out tonight at 6 for the Tyro Public Ministry. You will be blessed by that. Uh, also, after immediately after this service, we're going to be clearing off a few things on the stage for them. So if you want to hang around a few minutes after the service, help us out. We'd appreciate that. Uh, a few other announcements in the book in the in the bulletin there. Take a look at those. Uh, the youth have their annual chili cook-off coming up in January 21st. That's a good fun fellowship thing for us to do. Get together, uh, break some bread together. Uh, any other special announcements to make this morning? Oh, yes. That is Joan's birthday. <laughs> Who's Joan? Joan's oh, birthday. Joan's birthday today. Joan Earl, happy birthday. Yes, sir. I would like to have a birthday this week. Big number five. Any other birthdays, anniversary, celebrate today? Yes. All right. Let's bow before God in prayer as we worship. Father, come to worship you right now. We ask now that you would free our minds of all distractions. Lord, help us to give you our, our very best. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, we come to worship you. That's what we were made to do. So we worship you with all we have. Uh, Lord, come and fill the hearts of your faithful. Rekindle in us the fire of your love this morning. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand with me as we begin worship. <laughs> Thank you. 
Corey, it's been a blessing to have Corey with us since she's been on break from, uh, from college. But I know you're heading back into Western this week, so we, we send you with our prayers and blessings. All our college students will be starting classes back and maybe starting back this week. We're lifting up. Living Hope.
has an offering to the basket here on the altar table. Also, find our kids to have your children. So uh, we're starting to, with the big kids out here today, we're starting a new sermon series about our mission statement as part of the Global Methodist Church. And our mission statement is that we make disciples of Jesus Christ. That's, that, that's, that's first and foremost. We make people that, that want to love and follow Jesus. But we worship passionately. That's important. We love extravagantly. And then we witness boldly. So today I'm talking with the big kids about worship. Passionately. What does it mean to worship? Anybody? Anyone want to take a guess? What does it mean to worship? It means we, we kind of say, wow, God, you're so good. You know, it's just, it's just taking time out of our life to say, Lord, we worship you. <coughs> we, we, we lift you up. Um, it's what we're made to do. It is. It's what God created us to do, to worship. And, and there's a story in scripture uh, where it talks about that if, if we don't worship, if we don't say, God, wow, uh, we love you, we, we worship you. If we don't do it, you know what's going to happen? The rocks. That's what it says in scripture. The rocks will cry out. And so I've got an important challenge for you. I want to make sure that the rocks don't have to cry out. And you young people, you, you kids, you help us in that. You, you help us to worship. Not just to kind of sit there and, you know, just kind of go into motions, but you got to help us. Bring some energy, some passion to worship. Can y'all do that? Make sure the rocks don't have to cry out. Okay. Well, let's pray and then I'll uh, we can go to children's church. Oh, we thank you for these children, for their families. I just pray you continue to watch over them, guide them, bless them, nurture them as they grow in their faith. Uh, Lord, uh, may the little children lead us as we, as we worship you. Lord, help us to worship you with all we have in Jesus' name. All right. You guys are dismissed with Miss Sarah the children's church. And uh, parents, she'll bring them back in during the last song. There are a few more of you kids hanging out in the uh, hall here this morning. As we come to our prayer time this morning, make sure to take a look at the prayer concerns listed in the bulletin. Uh, if, if you ever have a prayer concern that you want Listen in both of us. Make sure to call the church office and shoot us an email. Make sure to get that in there. So we keep all those folks in your prayers. Um, Matt Berry had some surgery this week. He's doing well. Uh, Steve, you noticed uh, Steve playing the drums. Steve was at ICU last week, but he's here playing the drums today. So. <laughs> and I, I'm not tuning Steve's horn. This is, this is what God is doing through him. But he was in ICU Tuesday morning, then he was a freight man practice Tuesday night. So, uh, Lord, uh, thank you for, for healing Steve, before and after healing on him. Uh, Benay Seaman, as you, you may have heard, fell and broke her hip. She had surgery earlier in the week. She's doing well, uh, recovering from that. So keep her in your, in your prayers. Um, are there other prayer concerns, praises to, to lift up? Uh, several folks in the church kind of sick in the weather, various things, the blues going around, all that stuff. Uh, but, Keep those folks in your prayers. <coughs> Any others? 
bountiful God of prayer. Grace of God, we, we come to you today in the name of Jesus, in the name above all names. For we are blessed people, and we just pause to say thank you. God, thank you for not just for what you do for us, but for simply who you are. God, we come before you this morning bringing our petitions, loved ones, standing in a gap for those that are sick. For we know that nothing is too hard for you, but we come trusting you for all of our troubles and perplexities of life, and we're thankful for your presence in the midst of our challenges. So we thank you, we acknowledge you, and we worship you today. For we lift up those uh, specifically that are hurting, that are sick, those that are recovering from surgery or facing surgery, those that have lost loved ones, Lord, we pray that you pour out your healing and peace. We invite you now to look inside of our hearts and, and our minds, Lord, that we seek forgiveness for times that we fail. We're thankful for your grace and your mercy. Lord, mold us into your disciples. Lord, help us to be intentional about seeking you first, about worshiping you passionately, about loving you extravagantly and witnessing boldly. Help us to seek your kingdom first and your righteousness. We pray for our church today, Lord, for just a fresh vision, a fresh pouring out of your spirit upon us. Lord, strengthen us. Make us as strong as ever to be about your work, building your kingdom, sharing the good news of the gospel. We pray for our country, for our leaders, Lord, for those around the world uh, that are hurting this day in the midst of tragedy and war. We pray for a healing of our land and our world. Draw us back to you, God. Last, Lord, I pray for the message you've given me this week. Lord, that you might mold a, a sermon in the midst of all of our hearts today. That it might be effective and accomplish your purpose. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. <coughs> who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. <clears throat> so today we are beginning a brand new sermon series to kick off the, the new year. Uh, and it really began last week, although I wasn't aware of it. God was aware of it, but I wasn't aware of it. It actually began last week with, uh, with Angela talking about making disciples. Uh, I didn't tell Angela what to preach, and I said, well, just let the Lord lead you. And I know, by the way, I'm sure you were blessed by her and her, and her, um, her ministry. Uh, I, I knew you were in good hands last week, and I appreciated a little, little time away with the family. But the sermon series actually began last week. We talked about making disciples of Jesus Christ. That is primary. But today we're going to be talking about worship passionately. We're going to be looking at the mission statement of the, the Global Methodist Church, of which we are now a part of. And uh, the mission of the Global Methodist Church is this. Our mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ who worship passionately, love extravagantly, and witness boldly. Witness boldly. We're going to be looking at that in the context of Scripture this morning. Uh, so I'd like you to get your Bibles out if you have them. We're going to turn to uh, Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6, <coughs> verse 1 through, through 4. Hear these words. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Now, this is Isaiah speaking. Isaiah saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on the throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings, they covered their faces. With two wings, they covered their feet. And with two, they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy. Is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the threshold shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. I want you to turn over to the New Testament to James, James chapter 5, verse 16. Hear these words. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. 
The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. It's the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts and minds together be found acceptable in your sight. All the sermon in our midst and in our hearts today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Our mission statement to make disciples of Jesus Christ who worship passionately, love extravagantly, and witness boldly. And obviously, it begins with making disciples, and that's what all Angela had to talk about last week. And if you hadn't, if you weren't here last week or haven't had a chance to watch that at all, I invite you to go back and, and do that. Uh, first and foremost, our mission as, as followers of Jesus is to make disciples of all nations to carry out that great commission. Go ye therefore into all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our goal is to make disciples. But then our goal is to shepherd, to, to mold disciples who have a threefold understanding of what we are to be about, who worship passionately, that's where we're beginning today, love extravagantly, and then witness boldly. But today we begin by worship passionately, and that is very important. I might say it's the most important thing. Worship is more than just showing up on Sunday morning. Worship is more than just coming here, sitting in your, your seats. It's about how we worship. Worship is the, the chief goal of our life. We were all made and created for a purpose, and that purpose is to worship God. That is our first and foremost priority, the main job. And we need to do it and do it well. We hear the glorify God. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. If you read through scripture, particularly if you read through the Psalms, I remember uh, a few months ago we did a series on David. As you read through the, the Psalms, the Psalms are all about worship. You know, worship God through song, worship God through instruments, worshiping God through all of eternity, all through the, the Psalms, we are supposed to, to worship God. God, and David proclaims that, and, and we proclaim that. Passionate worship, though, it's got to be more than just showing up, more than just going through emotions. Worship is what we're created for. In fact, that's what we're going to be doing through all eternity in heaven, worshiping God. And so if we're going to be doing that through all of eternity in heaven, I think we ought to get pretty good at worshiping God here on earth. This is almost like practice before the main event. And, you know, being in sports, I know you, you practice like you play, and you play like you, you practice. And so as we worship on earth, I think we need to worship passionately because that's what we're going to be doing in heaven. But we confess this morning that too often worship has become mundane. Too often worship has just become kind of ordinary, common, routine. We're just going through the motions. We need to be reminded that worship at its core can never be mundane or routine. Uh, for goodness sake, sometimes we get, we get to make worship boring. And that's not the very last thing we should ever do is to make worship boring. Maybe you've heard the story about the, the husband and the wife. It's, it's Sunday morning, they're trying to wake up, and the wife nudges her husband, Honey, it's, it's time to get up. It's Sunday morning, we're going to get up. We're going to get ready for church. And the husband just kind of rolls over. A little bit longer. Honey, it, it, it's Sunday morning. You need to wake up. It's time to get up and go to church. And he's kind of, you know, he's kind of old. That goes back and forth, back and forth. And finally, she says, Honey, it's time to get up. It's Sunday morning, time to go to church. And the husband, he, he kind of gets up and says, Why? Why do I have to get up? And she says, Well, honey, you're the pastor of the church. <laughs> God help us. God help us. Never let worship be boring or mundane or a burden. It shouldn't be a, just a routine or common. God wants us to wake up on Sunday mornings with a pep in our step. He wants us to wake up on Sunday morning with a countenance in our being, ready to worship Him. It's the most important thing we will do all week long. Today we talked about passionate worship. As I told the kids, that the Bible says that we don't do it. The rocks will cry out. And so it's our job not to allow the rocks to cry out. So a couple things about passionate worship this morning. First, I want you to, I want you to notice this. 
We are called to marvel at the majesty of divinity. That's part of worship, just being in awe of who God is. I love the story from Isaiah that I read earlier, and you may have noticed, uh, you know, Isaiah sees the Lord. That's, that's what the scripture says at the beginning. Isaiah sees the Lord. I would suggest to you that is the very first thing that you need to do when you enter those doors on Sunday morning. Don't, don't look around. Don't, don't look around to see who's here. Don't look around to see where the coffee pot is. Don't look around to see who's, who's dressed sharp this morning or who's sitting with who. Now, don't look around. The first thing you need to do, look up. Look up. Wow, God, what an honor, what a privilege to come into your house to worship you. Look up. What a privilege. Isaiah looked up. And who did he see? He saw God and he marveled at the majesty of divinity. He marveled. That's our ultimate prayer. I think that's our ultimate goal when you worship, that we would see God. God, just give us a glimpse. When Isaiah saw God, and it was really amazing. He, he saw God stand <coughs> lifted up. That tells us God, God is not on the same level as we are. God is high and lifted up. He is exalted above us. And then scripture tells us that the, the train of his robe, it filled the temple. It filled the, the sanctuary. And scholars, scholars will tell us this, or listen, this is important. Scholars will tell us that in that time in the biblical era, when kings would go out visiting the different villages and towns, they would wear their robes. And the longer the robe, the more powerful the king. The longer the robe, the more powerful the king. And so listen to what Isaiah says. The, the train of his robe, it filled the entire sanctuary. It's powerful. Powerful. How great is our God. How great is our God. One other thing from Scripture here in Isaiah, it's interesting to me that, that Isaiah never speaks. He never says a word. He's, he is just captivated in the presence of God. He's so marveled by God that the angels actually have to speak for him. If you look at the, at the Scripture, Isaiah has no lines. He, he's just there, he, and he's, there's nothing he can say. The angels speak for him, and, and the angels, they're, they're kind of short of words, too. All they can say is, holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. The angels have to speak for him. And then the, the doorposts begin to, to shake. The thresholds shake, and the, the room fills with smoke. It's no wonder that Isaiah is at a loss for words. So I encourage you this morning, as we worship, as we enter into the Lord's house, don't look around. Look up. Look up. <clears throat> Be passionate about worship. See God for who he really is, high and lifted up. Cry out in your inner being like, to, like the angels. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. We are called to marvel at the majesty of divinity, of who God is. And then secondly, this morning, passionate worship includes passionate pleading through prayer. <clears throat> Prayer is such an important part of worship. Uh, prayer has never been, will never be just a, a simple conversation here. And there, prayer is so much more than that. Prayer is an absolute outpouring of everything inside of us to God. When we pray, we pray passionately. It can't be routine. It has to be passionate. Maybe you remember the story from Scripture when, when Jacob, uh, Jacob has crossed over the fork of the river and brings his family and all of his possessions, and he's kind of in this time of, of trial, and he wrestles with God. He wrestles all night in, in the scripture. It's kind of, uh, you know, you're not sure. He, he's wrestling with somebody, but then at the end, you figure out that oh, he's wrestling with God, and he wrestles with God all night long, trying to figure out what is next for him, what God has in store for him. And he wrestles with God. Have you ever wrestled with God in your prayers? Wrestled all night long. And you may remember from this particular passage, Jacob wrestles with God, and, and daybreak is just about to dawn, and Jacob's hip gets knocked out of the socket, and God says, Jacob, you've got to let go. You've got to let go of it. And then one of the greatest lines in all of Scripture, Jacob says, God, I will not let go until you bless me. I'm not letting go, Lord. I'm not going anywhere 
until you show me the way. God, I'm not letting go until you bless me. I need to pray with that kind of passion, with that kind of intensity. I remember how Jesus prayed. Obviously, Jesus told us how to pray in the, the Lord's Prayer. We see many examples of Jesus praying throughout Scripture. But I think about the, the intensity in which Jesus prayed in the garden before he was arrested. He prays with such intensity, with such passion that his sweat turns to blood. That's the kind of passion for which Jesus prayed. Passionate worship includes a passionate pleading through prayer. <coughs> Passionate worship also includes passionate giving from a grateful heart. Giving has always been important in the life of, of the church. It will always be important. Uh, giving in such a, a way that we, a tangible way we put our faith into action. And I'm so thankful for you. You are uh, faithful stewards of our church in, in that area. But here's the thing. Sometimes maybe we give with the wrong intention. Maybe we give out of obligation instead of giving from a grateful heart. Maybe you think, well, I'm a member of the church, it's just my, my obligation, you know, I'm going to the meeting, uh, you know, on the, the committee, that kind of thing. The last thing to do is to, to check off this box and to, and to give, give out of a, a moral obligation. The church, let me remind you, that Jesus never died on the cross because of a moral obligation. Jesus never died on the cross so that we could check off one more box on our to-do list. We should give with a, a grateful heart. Giving is an honor. It's a, it's a privilege. It's a joy. And they and I, we've been tithing for a long time. And you know what? The money that I give to the church, I never look back at it and say, you know what? Oh, you know what I could have done with that money? I never do that because I know that when I give to the church, God's going to take it and use it a hundredfold. He's going to take it and use it and bless a hundredfold as to what I could do with it. So we give it with, with joy. I give with a grateful heart. It's passionate giving. Passionate worship includes passionate giving from a grateful heart. <coughs> notice this, this next. Passionate, wor passionate worship includes passionate <coughs> sermon engagement. Now this is the cue for some of you to wake up. Amen. <laughs> passionate <laughs> sermon engagement. This is the cue for some of you to put the phones out. <laughs> Quit talking to your mother. <laughs> passionate worship includes passionate sermon engagement. Every Sunday morning, uh, I wake up and I, and I pray, Lord, just, just use me. Lord, use the words I say. Speak to me. Lord, mold a sermon in our hearts and minds. And I believe God answers that prayer, that prayer because, you know, sometimes you get something out of the sermon that, that, that you don't. And sometimes you get some, something completely different out of the sermon. God uses, you know, our words, my words, to accomplish his purpose. I hope and pray every Sunday morning. Lord, form a sermon in our hearts and minds. And here's, the, here's the reality. Sermons, you are not meant just to be passive observers. You are meant to be passionate participants in the sermon. You're supposed to be engaged in the sermon. I know we've set you up wrong because you come in and you, you know, you all were sitting here and your chair's facing this way and you're relaxed and drinking coffee, just having a good old morning. We're all up here, you know, kind of up here and you're, you're, maybe you're tempted to think, wow, well, you know, nice and relaxed. Okay, wow me. Uh, enter, entertain me. I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm just here. Show me what you got. But that's not what worship is. We are not passive observers. We are passionate participants. Worship. <coughs> this is not entertainment. What the band does, this is not entertainment. This is, this is worship. It will never be entertainment. This is not a concert. Worship. We have to do it passionately. When it comes time for the sermon, it, it, I think that's time for us to, to lean in together because the God of the universe is about to speak. It's a time where we, where we lean in and we, we, we aren't passive, but we are participants. And we lean in and we hear what the God of the universe has to say to us. The God of the universe is speaking. I can remember as an 11 year old boy going to Panther Stadium with Billy Graham Crusade. Many of you probably know. And, you know, a lot of worship, a lot of singing, a lot of crowd noise. 
But then when, when Billy Graham stepped up to the podium, you could hear a pin drop. I'm like, wow, this is awesome. And here's the thing. I'm no Billy Graham. And, and really, it doesn't have anything to do with Billy Graham. It doesn't have anything to do with me. But it has to do with who we're pointing to. What we're lifting up. The God of the universe is trying to speak into our lives. We need to listen. We're not here just to observe. We're here to participate. We're not here to be entertained. We are passionate participants. Passionate worship includes passionate sermon engagement. And then finally this, this morning. Passionate worship requires passionate commitment. Commitment. We come to church and we marvel at the majesty of divinity. We plead through passionate prayer. We give out of a, a grateful heart. We engage in the sermon. But here's the thing. We leave committed. We leave committed or, or recommitted. We are never allowed to leave in the same way in which we came. We leave committed, recommitted, motivated, our batteries charged and ready to see what God would call us to do and what God would have us to do in the coming week. Here I am, Lord, use me. Worship, gathering together as a, the body of Christ, it's where God ignites a fire in us, where God calls us, where God calls us into action. You know how many people have been called into ministry during worship? Many. You know how many people have been called into the, to be missionaries during worship? Many, many. God uses worship <laughs> Call us to, to ignite us into action. So where is God calling you? Don't leave here the same way that you came. We should be like the, the wise men. The wise men, upon encountering Jesus, their hearts were changed and they, and they went home a different way. They went home by a different way. Their hearts were changed. This morning, church, I just want to remind you, worship is, is not passive. You're not here just to be sitting in the pew. You're here to be passionate participants. Marvel at the, the majesty of who God is. Wow, we have the, the opportunity, the privilege to worship God. We plead through, through prayer. We give out of a grateful heart. We engage in the sermon and we leave committed to going where God would have us go. Worship is at the center of everything we do. As Christians, it's not just going through the motions. Worship should come with great intensity, great emotion. It's passion and worship. Let's pray to God. God, we are <coughs> called to worship you passionately, and Lord, you are certainly worthy of that worship. Help us also to love you extravagantly, to love others extravagantly, to witness to who you are boldly. God, this morning we make a new commitment to live into that, to be serious about this state. And God, we ask that you would bless us, that you would lead us, that you would guide us as we do so. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to stand with me as we sing our closing song. <laughs>
Have a few minutes to stick around with us. We love it.